Good afternoon. Welcome to the Inspiring Inkin Facebook page and welcome to the Inspiring Inkin YouTube channel. I'm Amanda Fowler. Today is Tuesday the, I don't know, 26th of July. And it's time for Craft and Chat. If you've never joined us before, we've got 20 minutes or so of chatting and then I shall get on with some crafting. I've got a fun fold card for you today. So if you're here live, can you let me know if you can see and hear me clearly? And um, if you're watching the replay, please do leave comments. I do read and, and respond to them as well. So how is your week going? <laughs> how is everyone? It's been all kinds of crazy here in my world. And I don't know why I say that as though it's a surprise. <laughs> my life's always crazy. Um, but I had a really fantastic team event at the weekend. I got to see some of my team um, and meet some of my team. How crazy is that? They've joined, these uh, team members have joined during COVID. I've never met them. So that was really exciting. And I got to see some I don't want to call them old faces because their faces aren't old, but I've known them for a long time. So, and there were lots of people who couldn't make it, so we missed them too. So let me know, what have you been up to? What what did you do at the weekend? Um, let me know. And whilst I'm waiting for the comments to come in, I am just going to tidy up my workspace. I was doing filming um this morning and I went off for lunch and got distracted and I hadn't cleared the desk so there is no way any crafting is gonna happen here at all until I've tidied up a little bit so let's have a look hi Jen we missed you at the weekend how's hubby doing um Jan is here good morning good morning Good afternoon. Joanne is here. She's found us this week. Yeah, that was really weird. I got about four messages last week. Um, people just didn't see the notification. Don't know why. Facebook was obviously playing, playing games. Good afternoon, Scylla and Margaret and Michelle and Donna and Marion. Cold and wet in Perth. It's actually, well, it's not cold here, but it's colder than it has been. Um, it's about 15 degrees outside. Not very warm at all. Hi, Tessa. How are you doing? Okay, so <laughs> I'm just going to, like I said, gather some of this stuff and try and tidy it up. Um, what else did I have to tell you about today? Um, it's craft along tonight, craft along tonight. Um, so those of you that are joining in, we are over on, let me put a banner up there, the Inspiring Inking Crafting Corner on Facebook. We are over there at seven o'clock. UK time. So um, if you can join us, that would be fabulous. Um, and you can craft along with us. If you are in the UK, you can purchase craft along kits from me, or you can get your uh, kit free with a qualifying £45 order. Um, and it works a month in arrears. So orders placed now in July will get the August craft along. Um, and if you are not in the UK, so if you're anywhere else in the world, you can join in with the PDF. So what you can actually do is I email you a list of all the products that we've, we're using and the measurements and so on, and you can craft from your crafty stash. So let's see. Oh, good. 
Jen's hubby's much better. Maureen's here. Hello, hello. And Stella's here. Texas is in the house. How's, how's Texas? Are you still crazy warm? Right, let me just, ooh. I can't show you the projects that I'm working on because it's secret. <laughs> that I've been videoing today because I've got to get ahead of myself. We are 41 days till Kimberly gets married. Something like that. So I have to, obviously, uh, we're going to be away and all over the place. And actually, <laughs> I'm, oh, oh, no. Right. There was a disaster. You're just going to have to wait a second because I've got coffee all over my desk. And worse than it being over my desk, it's on one of my cards. <sighs> oh, well, I'll just have to remake it. Right. Let's just. <laughs> that will teach me to go downstairs, put my feet up <laughs> and watch. Australian Master Chef. That's what I got distracted with at lunchtime. <laughs> oh dear. Right. Let's have a look. Oh, 41 to 43, says Stella. Blimey. That is warm. That is warm. Good afternoon, Sue. How are you doing? Good afternoon, Deborah. For those of you that are just joining us, I've just tipped coffee all over my desk. <sighs> right. I think, I think the disaster is nearly averted. Good, Sue. I'm pleased you are all good. I got your email earlier. Thank you. Um, it's the summer is going away quickly, isn't it? It's just all of a sudden we're nearly in August. <laughs> At least my desk is getting a clean. Look. Look at the state of this. Eek. Thankfully, the coffee did not spill on the projects that I'm going to be working on in a minute. Just the stuff I was working on this morning. Okay. Right. So, where were we? <laughs> Before I went, ah! Oh, dear. Okay. So, I'm actually going to drink the coffee rather than spill it now. And hi, Jackie. Saying hello to all of the crafters. Hello, hello, hello. Rainy, says Valerie in Hollywood, Florida. Um, My camera's doing weird things at the moment. I'm just going to put my hand in front of it to try and reset it. There we go. It keeps putting me in soft focus and whilst soft focus is probably a good way of seeing me, to be fair, um, it's no good if I'm showing you cards and projects and stuff. We want it to be nice and crisp. So I have a few things to show you. So the first thing I have to show you, it's been it's been on my desk for weeks. Um a little while ago, I showed you the, and I don't know what it what it was called. Um, let me get the catalogue, and I will tell you. 
I want to call it pearl accents. No. So it's pearlized enamel effects basics. And I promised to show you it when it was kind of dry. And this is all kind of lumpy. So if I turn it like that, ooh, put my hand behind it. Can you see the dimension? Oop, that way. Can you see how dimensional it is? And it is super shiny. So you've got the pearl and this middle one, it says it's black, but it's really gunmetal and then a red. So they are really cool, really lovely. So I'm going to be using those on some projects when we kind of get into the Christmas time. Um, I've had a couple of thank you cards this week. Um, the first one was from Mary, which is a really lovely. I love this way of using a flower stamp to make a wreath. That's really cool, isn't it? And then this one is from one another one of my team, actually from Eloise. It's really beautiful. Um, Marion's asking me if I'm watching the current season of Australian MasterChef. No, I'm not. I am watching season, don't know, 11, maybe, 2019. And look, I've gone in soft focus again. <gasps> okay. I don't know what's going on. Um, so, yeah. So, but on, um, on like our catch-up service, there's another two series. So, I'm guessing that it's probably 2020 and 2021. But, but I have to say, I'm really enjoying it because you get to see different places in Australia. So as much as the cooking. Okay, so this um, card is made by Sarah. So I should explain. Um, so the cards that are I'm showing you now are all swaps. So when we gather, when the team gathers together um, for an event or when Stamping Up Demonstrators gather for an event, we make something called swaps and we trade the cards with other people. So it means you get a great, um, a great array of different style, styles and samples and stuff. So I've got lots to show you. Um, so this one... Um, this one Sarah has made, I'm going to dismantle it because she's made it to dismantle and she's put a little magnet on the back of the Scotty dog. So it's actually designed to be a fridge magnet, which is very cool. And uh, this one is Barbara. Barbara made this one. So pretty. Uh, this one, Eloise made. Oh, it's got a treat in it. I hadn't seen that. Look. Delicious. So that's very cool. Scotty Dog is very popular. Um, I don't know who made that one. No name on the back. This one is Karen. And Karen's used the deckled rectangles. And I'm blaming Karen for making me buy them. Because <laughs> she was talking about them the other day. And... Somehow I've missed them, but they're so cool. They are really cool, really beautiful card. Um, this one is Lynn Freeman. 
candy cane. So this is a new set. And this, so the green here is a die. So that's lots of fun that you can kind of weave things in and out and it makes a great background. Uh, this one is from Jane. I love the um, splats. It's very cool. Just so it's like the dog shaking, isn't it? Um, this one is Sally. Beautiful autumnal card. So what's the stamps? It, the stamp set is called Soft Seedlings. And it's in the autumn winter catalogue. What page is it on? Page 53. And it's this one. And it's kind of, uh, I think it's kind of hidden. It's this one here. Because there's the pheasant and the happy Thanksgiving. So I would kind of discount that stamp set because, you know, in the UK we don't have Thanksgiving. But that is just so cool. Um, what else have I got? This one is Helen. This is also Helen. And what she's done is she's made a little accordion box with some treats in it. Which is really, really, really lovely. Um, now, Leslie made this. So this is a little handbag. It's got treats in it as well. You see, I should, I should have investigated all those treats first. But this is really cool. Cute little handbag. Uh, two more cards to share with you. Um, I don't know who made this one, but it's got the little piggy stamp on it. And finally, Yolanda made this one. And this is the new uh, celebration stamp set called Wonderful World. And I love these um, photo corners. It's just really pretty. So, I am loving all those swaps from all my team. Very talented crafters, one and all they are. Um, Marion's saying she's going to have to check out which one I'm watching, which MasterChef I'm watching. For those of you that are in the UK, it's um, on W, I think. Um, but I'm actually watching it on um, UK TV Play, which I get up on my iPad and then I stream it into the telly. So there's no adverts, which makes me very happy because, you know, don't have to sit through the adverts. <gasps> Hello, Lee. Bless her. She's in the middle of house packing and it's mayhem. <laughs> this is a nice to see a friendly face. That's lovely to lovely to see you too, really. Um, she's gonna stay a while. That sounds good. Thank you, Jan. Yes, they are beautiful cards and projects. I love, yeah, it's it's one of the, the best the best things with gathering with the team. And at our team events, as well as the swaps, we have display stampers. So I send out kits of products and people make things um, for a display. And we have people who do demonstrations as well. And we had two creative classes as well. So it was a full on busy day. There was cake, there was laughter, there were party hats. <laughs> so yeah, so we had a really, really lovely, lovely day. Um, and the next one is actually in September. So not long to wait really which is really cool good morning Llewellyn 
Okay. So I am going to turn the camera around in a second and get on with the crafting. Um, I do just want to say, I know I've been confusing everybody by my out of office being on, on my emails. So um, I did say a few weeks ago, throughout July, August, and into September, so kind of the next six or eight weeks, um, my out of office is going to be on and off quite a lot. Um, Brian and I are visiting family. We've got people staying. We're going away. We're um, all sorts of stuff. So basically, if I know that it's going to be a little while before I can actually sit down and deal with my emails, then I'm putting my out of office on. Quite often, you will hear from me before the time it says on my out of office, but it's just to cover me, just in case, you know, things happen, don't they? Um, and yeah, so we're, we're just, we're just kind of coming and going <laughs> a lot, probably like you guys over the summer. Um, yeah, so there you go. <laughs> Llewellyn says, enjoy myself. I deserve it. Bless you. Thank you. It's, yeah, work hard, play hard. That's what we need to do. <laughs> um, yeah. Awesome. Right. So I need to explain what we, we're going to make today. So on Saturday, Leslie, one of my lovely team, shared with us a variation of a card that's been around for a long time. And it was very, very cool. And at some point, I will share with you her variation. But we were talking and the team was saying, well, you know, the, the original never ending card we've not seen it and I'm going yeah but I've done a video on it and oh we can't find it so I've got no video on my YouTube channel I know so actually Sue's here Sue might remember I know we've done it in a Christmas class I'm sure we have and in my head, I've got visions of little elves. I know I've taught it in some of the classes and events that I've done in person over the years. But for some reason, never done, never done a public video. So today, I'm going to do it. So it's called... Oh, it's called a never ending card and it is super cool. I've got one made up already that's using old papers because um, it was in my samples box. I'm going to make um, one start to finish so you can see how it all works together. Um, I have measurements in inches and in centimeters, depending on which you prefer. And this is for sort of a six inch size. Now, normally, when you work on a six inch size piece of a card and you're converting it, you go to 15 centimeters. Believe you me when I tell you that you need to work at 16 centimeters because <laughs> the maths is so much easier. You don't want to work at 15. Um, so, Let's go with nice, easy numbers. So I'm going to get the camera turned around. My desk has now dried. So, <laughs> so there's no danger of the coffee going everywhere. And that is good. So let's... There we go. I clicked the wrong button again. Mm 
Okay, so. <laughs> Sue's, Sue's trying to remember. Yeah, I don't know. It's one of those, one of those weird things that I think we've done it before, but who knows? Lynn, my dear, how are you? Lynn's one of my, I could say one of my oldest friends. She is one of my oldest friends. We had adventures in Thailand together um, a very, very long time ago. How are you doing? How's James? Probably growing up too fast and all of those things. Okay. So, ta-da. Let me get my inks out. Get all my bits of paper out. Oh, it, this says bumblebee trinkets. It's not. Got these lovely little embellishments. I don't know if I'm going to use them. Um, and then... I have got lots and lots of pieces of paper. Now, what I want you not to worry about <laughs> is the instructions that I'm going to give you. The card to make itself is very simple, but there are lots of pieces of paper that you need to cut. So you need four pieces of cardstock and then actually 24 pieces of patterned paper. Don't panic. Um, it, it doesn't take that long, I promise, to cut them all. Um, so you have eight squares, little squares, eight rectangles and eight bigger squares. And it will all make sense, I promise, in a minute. Um, don't worry about trying to uh, take down the measurements and things. Everything will be below, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube. If you're watching this on my blog, just scroll down um, and the measurements will be there, both in inches and in centimetres. Um, OK, so this is the card. Now, this is not a highly decorated card. This is one of my sample cards. So. Um, Bear in mind, you can do all kinds of decorating on this. So this is the card. This is how it starts out. And then we open it up. So you've got a happy birthday there and you've got somewhere to write a sentiment. And then it opens up again and again and again. And we're back to where we started from. This is a, one of the most tactile cards you will ever find. Um, and it's one of those things that you will just keep opening and opening. Um, kids love it. Um, but to be honest, adults love it too. Um, makes a great teen card or a man's card, you know, cards that are more tricky to make. Um, but it is really, really cool. So I'm going to leave it like that. Um, and, you know, it can stand. So it, it's not it's not a kind of card that's cool to play with, but then it just has to sit flat on the table. It can stand like so. So, Sue, do you remember this card? Um, huh. So Lynn's just said that James, her son, is going to secondary school in September. That means that's a that's a very long time ago. Oh my word! So there we go. Okay, so let's get on. Um, I'm going to make. The mechanism first in two colours of cardstock. 
so that you can see it easy. Um, then I'm going to make the proper one using one colour. Oh, Jackie, yes, the fortune teller things. <gasps> she said this is so cool. It reminds her a, a bit of the fortune telling things. You know that, oh, wow, yeah, exactly. And you could use it as a fortune teller as well. So Sue doesn't remember it. So, well, here's a challenge then for all of my face-to-face -face customers who are watching this video. Does anybody remember me doing this in a class? I remember, I, I know for sure that I did do it at the, um, a, a craft group that I go to. But that's so strange. I thought you'd be a sure bet, Sue, because I know she keeps she keeps templates of all of the cards that we make, the special cards. Um, so what I should do, maybe I will start doing, is writing on my sample when we made it. <gasps> Lynn remembers doing it with me. Claire remembers it okay <laughs> don't worry sue <laughs> bless you thank you for thinking about it okay right so you need four pieces of cardstock six inches by three inches and you're going to score them all at one and a half and four and a half one and a half, four and a half, one and a half, four and a half, one and a half, four and a half. Okay. That is as technical as it gets. So we're going to use the bone folder and reinforce the score lines. Now, take your time doing this. At this point, score it both ways because it will make the card itself um, bend much easier. So Claire, do you remember, did we do it with Santa paper? Or is it just that I'm, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. It's so confusing. So you've got your four pieces and they're all scored the same way. Hi, Kathy Jean. So you want to take two pieces and have the rectangle segments, top and bottom, and you want to butt them up together. And then the other two pieces, you want the rectangles left and right, and they are going to go over the top like that and we are going to glue this in the four corners so i'm going to flip that piece over and can you see get a pencil you've got a square here and a square here And one here and one here so I'm just going to lift that up just to show you again so the glue is just going in those four corners 
Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so I'm just going to do a little squiggle. You can use double sided tape if you want to, but do not go outside of those squiggly lines. Make sure the score lines are in line and butted up against one another. And I find it easier to hold it down with one hand. And then I'm going to pop this down and you want to make sure that everything is lined up. And you don't want Tombow glue all over your arms. You know, you just get that off. Okay. And then you're just going to put the other piece on. Woo! And that is the card blank made. So once you've given it a second for the glue to dry, you can open it up and open it up and open it up and open it up and you're back to where you started from. Now, sometimes you might find that little bits catch. If it does, so I don't know whether you can see, there's a tiny, tiny overlap there where I've not quite lined it up perfectly so i've just trimmed off a sliver okay so at this point just make sure that everything is sliding nicely okay and then get yourself back to the beginning okay so where were we? That was the beginning. Was that the beginning? I'm, I've lost myself now. Is that the beginning? <laughs> oh dear. No, that's the beginning. Yes. <laughs> I need somebody to tell me. I can't remember because I'm kind of matching it to that one. Green up. Yeah, green on the top. Yes, and the yellow. Yeah, so it was like that. Yeah, okay. So, you want to make sure that before you start sticking anything down, it's flat both sides. So, those two pieces are, are flat and those two pieces are flat. What you don't want is something like that where you've you've got folded pieces. Does that make sense? Um, you also need to decide if it's going to stand up. Yeah, if you if you want it to stand up like this, then before you start decorating it, turn it around so that you've got the uh, rectangles top and bottom and the uh, split down the center so that when it opens up it opens up to two squares so like this one it opens up to two squares does that make sense yeah okay so that's the way it will need to go and then we're going to decorate it easily so i'm just going to put that to one side and really quickly <laughs> really really quickly i'm just going to do this one so um if you're working in centimeters then you will start out with four pieces of cardstock that are 16 centimeters by eight 
and you'll score it at four centimeters and 12. And that's why I say if, if you worked with the normal size, which is um, like a 15 centimeter piece, you'd be working on half centimeters and then quarter of a centimeter. And that is all a bit of a pain. Um, so you will see it doesn't matter um, when you're gluing as well. If you do it one way or the other way, it doesn't matter. Um, so long as you only put glue in those corners. So let's do exactly the same as I did last time. So we've got top and bottom and then side to side. And I just line it all up and fold it back because I can then just see the square. Now this will work bigger. So um, it works really well as an eight inch card. Um, and if you're making it for a small person, um you know a, quite young a bigger one is is often better um it's just easier for them to manipulate um and equally ooh, it's a bit wonky um equally you can um You can go smaller as well if you want to. Just be wary of going too small because you might not be able to um, turn it. So I'm just putting glue in the corners. Last one. There we go. So we're opening opening, opening, opening. Fabulous. Okay, so let's decorate this. So I'm actually going to turn it. Let's have a look. Yeah, so that so I can have my sentiment pieces in here. Um, now, when you are cutting your patterned papers, Try and use papers that aren't directional because it does look a bit weird <laughs> if you've got upside down trees, that kind of thing. Um, but ultimately, you might decide that that's you don't mind that. Um, but for some people, it it will be distracting. Um, I've picked, which is this paper? I want to say it's a wash with beauty. A wash in beauty. Do, do, do. No, it's not. It's hues of happiness. So a wash in beauty is because that's what I'm working on at the moment. Um, <laughs> so hues of happiness. Where is that? What page is that? 108. We used this in a craft along recently. So pretty. Papers are so pretty. And these flowers are just really easy to cut out. But this paper here is like a color wash so i just thought it would work really well um and then these papers these are flowers but they're all kind of jumbled up so that's that's not too bad so um this is going to be uh, the front of uh, my card um and i'm just going to play around with my colours. Uh, 
Okay. Oh, shall we go that way? Yeah, I think we're going to go that way. Yep. Okay, so that's my first set. So I'm going to glue them down. And it's best to work this way. So you just put your piece of paper down for one and then turn your card and then go again. Now you can add additional mats and layers if you want to. But I will urge a little bit of caution. The more layers you have, the more likely things are to catch, which is why I haven't put a cardstock layer. I've just gone straight to paper. Um, and also be aware that if you use any embellishments, anything bumpy, it can also catch. Okay. So there we go. So there is the first set of, of papers. Then I'm going to turn it in. Now, I can see that these two are full squares. But these underneath pieces could be squares could be rectangles, but if I open this a little bit more, look, I can see that they're full squares. So I would recommend that once you've done your first layer, you stick all your squares on next. Then you'll be able to infill with the little, sorry, the big squares, and then you'll be able to infill. So I am going to do this with these. Thanks, Carol. So I'm going to put this one on. Bear in mind that this is going to have my sentiment on it as well. So that's going to go there. So I'm going to open it up again. And I can see that I've got two squares here. Oh, I think I might have to do that way for that one. And then I'm going to open it up again. And you'll see that this will end up two more squares. Yeah. The best bit about this card is once you've made it, you can see all the color combinations. It's really cool. Okay. So I can see, looking at this, that these are two rectangles and they're definitely not kind of part rectangles. So I am going to put these on here. Next. And then all we will have left will be the little squares. Ha <laughs> ha! Sue says she definitely would have remembered this. Well, there you go. You see, in my, I have three crates full of samples. And clearly, I've decided at some point I was going to do this in the class and maybe I just didn't. Maybe I changed my mind. But it is fun. Okay, so now, kind of back at the beginning again, aren't we? There we go. So, 
all of the, these are obviously square pieces now so we'll put those ones i think with with a bit more yellow And you can see because um, this is um, a little square, what I've actually done is I've gone to the smaller pattern. Um, as otherwise, if it's got a bigger pattern on it, it can get lost. Okay. There we go. So those are the last ones. So then we should have a full set. Concentrating, I'm not chatting. So Tessa says she's definitely made one, but she can't remember when or where. Yeah, you see, this is this is my problem, Tessa. It's why, yeah, I I just don't remember. Okay, so right, okay, so here we go. I've got a bit of blue there. So if you remember, this is the front. This is the front and then we've got inside so can you see now this piece and this piece when you first look at it you think oh that's a rectangle piece but it's not because it's a square and then we go to the purples and then we go back to the beginning so let's see I've got some Ooh. I just thought that would that would work really well. So let's I'm just going to layer those up. So these are the circle dies that um, come in the what's the shapes dies that I'm using all the time. What's it called? Da, 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 da. Stylish shapes, this one here, look. Circles, squares and banners. Super cool. Now you might be tempted, like I said, to put dimensionals on this. Don't do it. Don't do it. Um, because it will just catch. Hi, Mum. She's been out gallivanting today. <laughs> it's okay. You can watch me on the replay. She's just got back. Okay, so look. There we go. So we could put a sentiment here. Um, what did I have? Da, da, da. Had biggest wish. And I thought... I could put happy birthday on there, but I don't think I've got the right shades of colour to do that. I brought starry sky, granny apple green and daffodil, but that is not going to work. So I will stamp on this and I will use Biggest Wish because, you know, um, but I'm not going to do it now because I haven't got the right shade of colour. So let me go again. So we could put some more flowers, more embellishments on here as well, if you want to. And then 
or some more sentiments. So I did, I picked up this, um, a grandkid. This is a sentiment set that I've been using for a long time. And I love this. So smart, so fun, so sweet, and so wonderful. Um, and then the matching bit is we must be related. <laughs> That's very cool. Um, so you can put sentiments on there. Obviously, you can put more flowers on there. And then we're back. And then we're back to the beginning again. Now, the this, so bear in mind, this is, we've decided that this is the front. So that will obviously be the back. Make sure, I'm just going to put that one on there. Make sure that you have somewhere to write on. Because as otherwise, you know, what's a greeting card without any greetings on it? Or obviously you can write there as well if you want to. But then you've got, you would have the sentiment there. And there we go. So I hope that you will give this a go. It is so quick and easy. It's not a difficult card to make. Um, you just, just make sure when you're gluing it together, you have two pieces going horizontally and two pieces going vertically and you just glue in these corners. There is no glue anywhere else because if you've got glue anywhere else, your card won't move. Okay, so just in those corners. Lots of love for the colours. Yeah, I, I love it. It's just, it. one of the things for me, the best thing about Stampin' Up! is the colour, co no, that's not true. The very best, best thing about Stampin' Up! is the people. Hands down, team members, customers, demonstrator friends, hands down people. The next best thing <laughs> about Stamping Up is its coordination. Um, it just makes it so easy to be able to have things that work beautifully together because Stamping Up's done all the hard work for us. So I love it. I am so pleased that you are loving this card. I want to see pictures flying into my inbox. Here you go. I'll give you my email address. Fly, fly into my inbox of, of cards that you've made. It will be very, very exciting. Right. So I am going to love you and leave you. I need to go and sort out everything ready for craft along tonight so we are live at seven o'clock on the inspiring ink and crafting corner on facebook if you are going to join us over there make sure that you've applied to join the group before 6 p.m uk time that is three hours from now um, because once I start prepping and setting up, then um, I don't get notifications. So if it's after that, then sadly, I won't be able to let you in until I finished. So take care of yourselves until next week. Um, and I will see you all again soon. Goodbye.